Hey, this is Vu, and this is going to be questions and answers number five. Now, the first thing I'm going to say here is that I do need demos submitted for review. So if you'd like to know how to do that and potentially get a demo reviewed by me, you can either watch or skip to the end of the video. I will put a timestamp in the description and you can learn how to do that. Now, there are two questions for this video. The first one is going to be about smoke usage. Someone asked how he can conserve his smokes until later on in the round because he feels like he uses them a little bit too early. The second one is going to be about holding rushes in general so these are a little bit lower level in the questions and answers if you'd like to avoid that if you're a little bit higher level player you can just skip to the end and see how to submit your demos if you'd like to the first question I want to say Typically, you want to be using your smoke if there's ever a question mark where there's a situation where you're thinking, maybe I can save something with the smoke, maybe I can save someone's life, delay something, something like that. You want to err on the side of using your smoke because it's obviously better to be alive without a smoke later on in the round than it is to be dead and have your smoke sitting on the ground because you tried to save it in a bad situation. So you always want to keep that in mind. If you're thinking about using a smoke and you don't just because you want to hold on to it until later, might not be the greatest idea. Now, as for actually using smokes, I see a lot of people that kind of misunderstand what smokes are good for or what they should be used for, especially early on in the round. Most people seem to have a generally decent idea of how to use a smoke later on in the round. However, early in the round, a lot of people use their smokes simply to prevent a rush, which I think is typically not the greatest idea. Of course, there are times when it's okay to do that, but if the situation before the smoke is thrown and after the smoke is thrown are exactly the same, typically you don't want to be throwing it. And now this doesn't include actual kind of strategies or anything like that where you're playing with a team. This is just for general gameplay and pugs and matchmaking and you're kind of deciding what to do on your own independent of your teammates. You have to be thinking of this. So I'm going to use A here on cash as a good example because I can give a pretty good example of both a bad way and a good way to use a smoke. Now, a good way to use a smoke is if you're playing a standard 1-3-1 setup and you want to smoke off A main early. Now what this smoke typically does is it prevents a rush from the opponents and afterwards you yourself will not be in a very different situation than you were beforehand. It will delay an opera, it will incentivize other players on the terror side to go somewhere else instead of A early, um, kind of delay them a little bit, but what it's really doing is it's allowing mid to get set up early on in the round without having to worry about you being pressured at A. Mid is a very hard spot to hold early on in the round until you can get players pushed up towards vents or close middle. And so you want to have those three players dedicated here towards mid. They'll often throw this smoke in the middle, which is allowing them to specifically get better positioning for afterwards. So that's a very good way to use a smoke. And after that smoke is down, after your teammates are pushed up in middle and they've maybe done a little bit of aggression or something like that then this white box player will typically come over and support towards the a site side so while this smoke at a main early didn't really change your situation very much as a solo a player it will have changed your team's position as a whole and it'll allow you to have a little bit more support towards a when that smoke goes down so it's a very good use of the smoke right there it also can mask a few things for example pushing through the smoke later or things like that if you do it with two rifles at a and you kind of switch it around. So it's a very good smoke to throw early. Now, a bad way to throw a smoke would be if you were duoing A, and specifically if you're duoing A with an AWP. Now, the reason I don't say duoing A with rifles here is because, as I said, with a smoke thrown down here, you can boost up with rifles, you can peek behind it, you can flash push. There's a lot of things that that smoke can do to allow you to have some aggressive capabilities early on in the round with double rifles. So that's another pretty valid way to throw that smoke if you're trying to get aggressive by using it. However, with an op, you're not really looking to do the same thing and you have to consider, if an op is posted on quad here and he's waiting for the A main push, does it really change anything when that smoke goes down? And the answer is typically no. Well, actually it does change something. It allows your opponents to get on the other side of A main, which can be very detrimental towards your A player actually holding onto the site, especially with an op, which specialize when you can 
focus on only one angle instead of having to worry about both sides. So it actually hurts you a little bit, but other than that, it really doesn't change anything. If an opper on their team is going to peak, he's going to peak either way. You're really just delaying for that 20, 25 seconds and doing nothing else. Rather than doing that, you can hold your smoke on until later in the round when there's 40, 30 seconds left that's a great time to use a smoke simply to delay your opponents. What it'll do is it'll prevent an enemy team from actually pushing through that smoke and it'll force them into situations where they either have to push through it, which is not the greatest in general, or they have to delay until it's down, in which case they have 10 or 15 seconds only to go from A main into the site or from, you know, wherever you're throwing this on any map into the site. Using that smoke later on is great for the ideas that aren't so great earlier on in the round and so saving your smoke can be extremely good in those scenarios so anyways heading on to the second idea here the second question is going to be about rushes and i want to say probably the biggest problem i see in these lower rank gameplay um, in terms of being able to hold rushes is actually this kind of misunderstanding of what an off angle does i see at these lower ranks a ton of people play tons of off angles every round and I think people kind of don't recognize that while off angles are very good to play especially in these pugs and in matchmaking they have merits you need to be recognizing here that they are very weak at holding rushes so if you're trying to deal with an enemy team that rushes a lot if you're thinking they might might be rushing your bomb site you want to avoid playing off angles because off angles are basically angles where you're stuck in the middle of the open and there's very little ability for you to get a kill and fall off they're very good against disorganized uh disorganized teams that don't trade frag that aren't playing together and so they're very good in pugs and matchmaking you just have to be aware of the trade-off you're having here now as for actually holding the rushes typically what you want to be doing is focusing a little bit more on staying alive i'd say this is also very common at these lower ranks where players have a tendency to take gunfights until they die over and over as many as they want and either they get a 5k spray down or they're going to die and this is typically not the greatest situation to put your in especially if you're soloing a bomb site the thing you need to be thinking about here is that staying alive is incredibly important so I'll give you a good example here this is gonna be an extreme example that should get you thinking about how important staying alive is let's imagine for a second that you're holding in B site you grab a kill towards B main here and then you unpeak and your mouse dies okay or your game crashes or something like that so you just kind of sit here and AFK and they run into site eventually and kill you you can think for a second about what your opposing team is doing while you're sitting behind those boxes, you know, not even touching the game. Well, they're probably walking along this side of the boxes. They're probably trying to, you know, jump up here, play it a little bit safe, trying to make sure that they have someone posted. For example, they might have someone sitting here waiting for you, walking up slowly. They're not pushing directly into the bomb site. So what you're doing simply by staying alive is you're allowing your teammates time to rotate towards the bomb site. And eventually what they're gonna do, the enemy team, they're probably gonna push into the bomb site with two, sometimes even three players and try and get a bomb plant with three players stuck on this side in the bomb site or kind of a headshot or wherever whereas if they had simply killed you early they would have been able to run in get a free bomb plant that single box which by the way is the best bomb plant um, typically and it should be your default unless someone has control of checkers but anyways they can get a single player to the bomb site plant the bomb he can play a decent crossfire and the rest of his teammates can focus on getting into good after plants so simply by staying alive you're forcing the enemy team to have worse after plants delaying their bomb plant and you're doing a lot of very positive things by not dying early so to try and utilize this without a ridiculous scenario where your mouse dies or something you can think of scenarios where the enemy team is pushing you want to be trying to fall back into multiple advantageous gunfights a great example of this would be here at a especially if you have an op so without an op you can still do this you'll just start at the second angle instead of the first one you'll not be in as good of a situation but 
you can think an op can take a shot here at first so you'll get a kill there potentially fall back you can take another shot here fall back again potentially take another shot here although it's a little bit risky and fall back again and take another shot here so what you can imagine there is four gunfights where you have a fairly good advantage where you're given the chance to get a kill while still allowing yourself to fall off into safety if you do or don't get the kill and you're allowing yourself to remain alive preventing your opponents from directly running into the bomb site and planting freely making them worry about you a little bit and all those sorts of things and you're kind of setting up knowing that while they're rushing the bomb site they have to pass into your crosshair they're passing through a few very specific angles they have no choice and you can prevent them from doing it safely now of course a site here being a site on cache, it is a spot where you'll have typically a teammate when your opponents execute. You're generally not going to be playing here solo. And that means that you can frag out to a little bit more of an extent than when you're solo. Because if you think about it for a second, if you're solo in a bomb site and you get two kills and die, then it's a four on three for your team. But if their team, the terrorists, get the bomb plant and have a solid after plant setup, a four on three really isn't a very advantageous situation for the CTs. In fact, with the bomb planted, you can kind of imagine that as an extra player, and so it's not the greatest situation at all. However, if you're in a bomb site with a teammate and you both get two kills and die, that turns it into a three on one, which is a very good situation for your team and one that they'll probably win more often than not. So you can frag out a little bit more when you're in these two man bomb sites you can try and go for the kills a little bit more aggressively however the same thing does apply that falling back to multiple advantageous situations is very strong or rather than doing that you can try and set up in these two man bomb sites into some crossfires where you can get multiple kills together so you do have an extra option here you can play a little bit more aggressively worry a little bit less about dying and giving a free bomb plant as you have a teammate there that's going to remain alive as well however the same things do apply now as for submitting your demos i'll say quickly typically what i'm doing is i'm posting on twitter asking for demos so your best way to do this to get these demos submitted is to follow me on twitter i don't really care about the followers that's not what it's about it's simply that i know when i need demos i'll do it you know once every two three weeks maybe even once a month and i will look at any demos submitted so long as they're steam run game links or ESCA pug direct links i'm not downloading anything from any file sharing websites or anything like that submit me one of those and i'll say that typically i take somewhere between um somewhere between 12 to 36 hours to get to these demos so you have plenty of time to be in a different time zone to not even look at my twitter every you know whatever however many hours you can even play a game and get a demo after seeing my tweet looking for demos and have plenty of time to do it i'm sorry i don't want to do emails for this type of thing i've done it in the past and it just was extremely inconvenient trying to get people to email me demos as oftentimes there would be you know only one in a time period or all the recent ones were expired or things like that so follow me on twitter catch my posts looking for demos make sure your demo isn't about to expire because i can say about 30 to 50 percent of demos i receive are on the verge of expiring or a lot of the time they've already expired by the time i get to them so anyways thanks for watching and i hope this helped also vu csgo is my twitter very simple Peace.